everyone, my name is Brittany from Brittany Loves Reading and today is the first day of rom com -a It is Monday, February 13th and I am going to be reading seven romance books in seven days for rom com -a If you don't know, rom com -a is hosted by Michelle from Michelle's Libraries, Aoife from Pretty Purple Polka Dots, and Brie from Four Paws in a Books. And if I'm correct, this is the third round of rom com -a Pretty sure. It is a week to read rom-com books. There are seven prompts for this readathon, and you could double up, but I've decided to be extra and do seven books in seven days because why not? Why not? Basically, since Christmas, I have been in a romance mood. I was reading holiday romances and I do that kind of every December. I love holiday romances and I want all my Christmas reads to feel like Hallmark Christmas movies. And usually I read those for December and then I don't really pick up much romance for the rest of the year. Well, this year has been different. I have read so much romance this year and I'm enjoying my time with romance. So this is the perfect time for this readathon. Now, like I said, I will be doing seven books in seven days for this readathon. However, this first day is a little bit different because the book that I'm reading is actually for a kind of secret ish video project that will be coming out the video after this one. So this comes out on Thursday. This video project comes out on Sunday. So I will be telling you what I'm reading and what prompt I'm reading it for. I'll also come back and give you my star rating for this book, but that's about it. I'm gonna leave all my thoughts for the other video. But the other six days and the other six books, I will give you my full thoughts. So there will be tons of book reviews in this video, just not on this one specifically. The first book I am reading for rom com in the first day of reading that I'm going to be doing is for the Friends to Lovers prompt, and I'm going to be using Secretly Yours by Tessa Bailey. This only came out last week, so I'm very excited to be picking it up so soon after my pre-order came in. I will tell you a tiny little bit about this, but like I said, I'm just gonna be coming back and giving you my star rating and leaving all my thoughts for the video project. But this follows Haley and Julian. At 14, they almost kissed at Julian's family's vineyard. Didn't, they went their separate ways. Now they are adults. Julian is back in town and Haley has been hired to revamp the gardens on the Voss estate. These two at first, their personalities clash, but it is a Tessa Bailey book and it is a contemporary romance. So I expect a romance to happen, logically. I also expect it to be at least somewhat smutty because it is a Tessa Bailey book and I'm here for it. I'm gonna be reading this today and I will come back and let you know my star rating when I'm done and tell you what I will be reading for the next day of rom com -a -thon. I'm so excited for this week. I'm so excited to just read romance all week long. Like, I'm so excited. It is Tuesday, February 14th. Happy Valentine's Day. Although by the time you've seen this, it will not be Valentine's Day any longer, but it is the second day of rom com -a -thon. Did I finish Secretly Yours on the first day? No. Did I finish it this morning? Yes, yes I did. So I've officially read the first book for Rom Comathon, and I'm gonna give this four stars again, like I said earlier. You'll see my full thoughts in the next video that comes out, but I am gonna give this four stars and I'm excited to read the second book in this series. That being said, it is the next day and with doing seven and seven, that means I need to read another book today. And because I got behind yesterday, I am going to read the smallest book on my TBR today just to kind of play a little bit of catch up. I do have sprints tonight. It's Tuesday night sprints with friends tonight. I do those every Tuesday night on my channel. So I do have time to read, but I just don't want to put too much pressure on myself where I spent like already two hours this morning reading Secretly Yours. So I'm going to go with the smallest book on my TBR for the week. And that is for the prompt of dual POV. For that, I will be reading The Honey Don't List by Christina Lauren. Plus, is this not the most Valentine's cover that I could ever pick up for Valentine's Day? I think it was meant to be. So this follows Cassie. Cassie has been working for a home decorating couple. They have a TV show. 
they're kind of like the Chip and Joanna Gaines type people. Cassie has worked for them for years. And this follows Cassie. It also follows James, who has been hired to be a structural engineer on a job that, again, this design couple who is Melissa and Rusty Tripp need. The only problem is Melissa and Rusty Tripp, this ideal home decorating couple, do not actually like each other very much. And there's a lot of drama behind the scenes and Cassie and James have to deal with this drama. This is a romance, so I expect something to happen between Cassie and James while they are trying to deal with the drama of their employment. That is what I'm anticipating from this book. This is my fourth Christina Lauren that I've ever read. I've given two five stars and a four star, so I have very high hopes for this book. This is the second one I've read this month. So I actually have really high hopes for this book and I'm excited to get to it. It's been on my shelf for at least a year, so. And it's perfect for Valentine's Day. I finished The Honey Don't List by Christina Lauren last night on Sprints. It was very late. It was like 11.30, almost midnight. So I figured I would just update you this morning. I am so sad, but I didn't like this. This is the first Christina Lauren that I haven't liked. But for some reason, this just didn't sit with me. I'm going to end up giving it two stars. If it wasn't that I was trying to do seven books in seven days, and if it wasn't for a rom-comathon prompt, I probably would have DNF'd this about halfway through. But it was only about an hour and a half left on the audiobook, and I figured I would just push through and finish it. I'm glad that I finished it, but I just, I just didn't like this. This in theory follows Cassie and James. Cassie and James are both basically assistants to this designing duo couple, very similar to a Chip and Joanna Gaines. I think I said that earlier situation. You would think that was the main plot point, but it's really, really not. We don't follow enough of our main characters for me to really understand their relationship at all. And then by the time they fall into a relationship, it feels really rushed and kind of just doesn't make sense to me how that progression of the relationship worked. And I think it's because there just wasn't a focus on their relationship as much as you would expect in a contemporary romance. There was a lot of focus on this design couple and their drama. And it's not just that they are irritated by each other, like their marriage is falling apart. In the first like 10 pages, one of them cheats on the other one. And we find out that this has been a continual thing. There is just so much drama with this couple. And that is at least 50 to 60% of the book. It's almost like they are the main characters, but they're not. And I just didn't care about their drama. I didn't care about their relationships. I wanted to know more about James and Carrie, who are the assistants but there wasn't enough of it there. There just wasn't enough of it there. The other issue, which is not really an issue with the story, it was an issue with the audiobook. This is narrated by two different narrators, a male narrator for James and a female narrator for Carrie. The male narrator, when it was a chapter that was from James's point of view, would do the female's dialogue if he was conversing with a female. And the way that this narrator did a female voice was the most irritating thing that I've ever witnessed. It was like shrill. It was not good. It was not good. And that didn't affect my rating, but I did want to mention it because it did affect my enjoyment of this book to some extent. So I would probably, if you are going to pick up the Honey Don't List, maybe skip the audiobook. That being said, it is done. I normally love Christina Lauren. This one just didn't hit for me for various reasons. And I'm just going to chalk it up to it's done. I finished the prompt and I got another book off my TBR. The next book that I am going to be doing is actually one that I have on my Kindle and it's The Worst Best Man by Mia Sosa. And I would love to give you a synopsis of this book, but at this point, I literally don't know. I needed a hate to love book for a prompt and I was really struggling to come up with one for various reasons. I didn't have anything on my shelf that really fit that prompt and I needed something 
Brie from Four Positive Books mentioned this in their TBR video, so I put it on mine. It was on Kindle for $1.99 and I was like, done. But I cannot tell you what it is other than that it's a hate to love trope. I will come back and let you know a full synopsis once I have started reading this book, but at this point I can't really do that. But it is day three of rom com -a and this will be the third book that I am reading for this vlog. And like I said, I'll, I'll update you on exactly what's going on in this book after I've read it. So I finished The Worst Best Man very late last night on Sprints. And this is, again, by Mia Sosa. I really liked this book. It was a four star for me. Really interesting. I don't think I told you anything about it because I didn't know last time I spoke to you. So this follows Carolina Santos, also known as Lena. Lena, three years ago, was stood up at the altar by her fiance. He ran away from their wedding and didn't even have the backbone to tell her and sent his brother, who was the best man, to tell Lena that he was not going to marry her. Fast forward three years, Lena is now trying to get a job at a high-end hotel chain as their wedding planner. The owner of the hotel is asking two wedding planners to basically put on a presentation to see who's best for the job and use the ad agency that the hotel uses to help them do this. The people who are assigned from the ad agency happen to be Andrew, who is Lena's ex-fiance, and his brother Max, who is the best man who told her he ran away at the wedding. Lena gets paired up with Max for this project to get this dream job of hers, and it's definitely a hate to love romance. Lena is dead set on making his life hell because he basically was the messenger. But also Andrew, who was the ex-fiance, had kind of made it sound that Max talked him out of marrying Lena when he ran away. So there's a lot of layers to this. Lena is a first generation Brazilian American and her family is from Brazil, and there is so much of Brazilian culture in this book that I was learning about and so intrigued in. I loved the culture in this book. It was so fun and so interesting to read, and it really made the atmosphere of this book just excellent. I really liked the play with Max and Lena, even when they were kind of at each other's throats and kind of making each other's life a little bit difficult. That was fun, but once the romance started, it was actually a really good romance, and you could tell that there were a lot of background issues that made this romance difficult, but they covered them really well in this book, and I enjoyed that as well. Like I said, I'm gonna give it a four star. It was a great read for me, and I definitely wanna read The Wedding Crashers, which is also by this author, because I've heard it's even better than this one, so that needs to happen at some point. Today though, it is Thursday and we are on our fourth read for rom com -thon. And this one is a book that I have heard about everywhere. I'm using it for the has a wedding prompt or features a wedding, something like that. This is a book, like I said, it is beloved on the romance side of booktube and I am so excited to finally be reading it because I have the FOMO of like, I wanna know what this is about, I wanna know more. And that is Delilah Green Doesn't Care by Ashley Herring Blake. I'm so excited to pick this up. I have heard nothing but amazing things about this entire series. There is two currently out in the series and there is a third coming out this summer, I believe. Very excited to read this. This is a queer romance and I am so excited to finally read this book and to know what all the fuss is about, because there's a fuss, and I wanna know what the fuss is about. This follows, obviously, Delilah Green. Delilah had kind of a hard childhood in this town of Bright Falls. Yeah, Bright Falls. She swore she would never go back to Bright Falls. She ran away to New York as soon as she was old enough and has lived her life there. Her stepsister Astrid is now getting married and has basically 
gotten Delilah to come home for the wedding and do the pictures for the wedding. Delilah, while in town, meets Claire, who is a single mother of an 11 year old daughter, I believe. Yeah, a single mother to an 11 year old daughter and is one of Astrid's, Delilah's stepsister's best friends. This is a contemporary romance. So there is a romance between these two characters and that is really all I know. I think there is more to this story than just being a romance. I think there's some family angst and things going on as well, but I don't really know because like I said, I haven't really read the book yet. I did start it this morning, but I'm only 40 pages in. So I certainly don't really have much knowledge of what's going on just yet. This is going to be my fourth book for rom com -a -thon. I am finally not going to have FOMO about this series and I'm gonna go read it right now. Right, right now. Hi everyone, I am just sitting at my kitchen table having a morning coffee. It is the Friday morning of rom com -a -thon. This week is flying by, but like, I'm having such a fun week. I've basically been jumping in on people's sprints almost every night this week because I'm trying to read so many books and sprints is a good way to do that. And my friends have been inviting me and it's been a fun week of sprinting and reading and just, I'm having a great time. Today is the start of Neva's 24 hour sprints. If you don't know, Neva does 24 hour sprints, one 24 hour period a month. I do not know how she does it. I applaud her every time. Like. Holy cow. But I usually pop in for a few hours of those 24 hours. I certainly don't do all of it and sprint with her for a little while. And I will be doing that today. That being said, last night on sprints, like I said, I've been sprinting, sprinting a lot this week to get all these books done. Last night on Brooklyn's channel, I finished Delilah Green Doesn't Care. I'm actually very surprised I finished this last night. I kind of thought it would float into today because it is my longest book, but I did get it finished. I put this as four stars on Goodreads, but that's because I don't do half stars. If I did do half stars, I would actually say this is a 3.5 rounded up to a four. I did enjoy this book. It was very cute. I loved the romance between Claire and Delilah. That was my favorite part. This follows Delilah Green, Delilah, her parents died when she was very young. Her mother died when she was three. Her father died when she was 10. Her father had been remarried about one to two years before he passed away. So after he passed, she was raised by Isabel, who is her stepmother and had a stepsister Astrid as well from that marriage. However, Isabel really did not want to take care of Delilah, did because she felt obligated. But Delilah really never felt loved in that parental relationship. As soon as Delilah turned 18, she went to New York and left Bright Falls behind. Claire's a single mother of Ruby, who is a teenage daughter, preteen age. Claire was a childhood friend of Astrid, who's Delilah's stepsister. And Astrid had a group of friends, which included Iris, Claire, and Astrid. Delilah comes back to Bright Falls for Astrid's wedding to Spencer and Claire and Delilah quickly realize they have a connection and find each other very attractive and a romance does start from there. I loved Claire's character. I really did. I loved Delilah's character as well and I loved their romance and everything to do with that. As a single mother, I really did relate to Claire. I have a teenager, so I really did relate to Claire very strongly and really enjoyed that part of the book. The parts that fell flat for me were the parts with Astrid and about her wedding. I just didn't really care about Astrid as a character that much. I didn't dislike Astrid, but I wasn't that interested in the character and everything going on with their wedding. Claire and Iris are Astrid's two best friends and they recruit Delilah to kind of help convince Astrid that her fiance, that she should ditch the fiance. The fiance is a jerk, he's a misogynist, like he needs to go. And I think I would have liked that storyline, but they don't really play it out very much. They want to kind of do it as like pranks and things and 
make him show his true colors. And I honestly thought he was showing his true colors all on his own and didn't really need the help and that Astrid would probably figure this out on their own as well and did. So I kind of found that whole part of the storyline just, just fell flat for me. I know this is a super beloved book and I did like it. Like I said, 3.54 stars. Like there was a lot about this I did like. The smut was really good. The relationship with Claire and Delilah was really good. I just didn't really care about the Astrid wedding part of this book. But there was a lot about this book that I did like. And like I said, I related to Claire so much in this book. There was a lot of talk of co-parenting and various things of that nature. And I really did relate to a lot of what was discussed on that side. Uh, and I really did relate to a lot of things talked about around that. And I really did love Delilah and Claire. I can't say that enough. I really did love Delilah and Claire's relationship and how that all shook out in the end. And that's how I feel about this book. I feel like I've been going on for a while. So I'm gonna put this down and let you know what I will be reading for day five of rom com -a I will be fulfilling the prompt of Second Chance Romance today with In the Weeds by B.K. Borson. This is the sequel to Love Light Farms, which I read in December. I absolutely loved Love Light Farms. I gave it five stars. This is the sequel. This follows Beckett and Evelyn. In the first book, Beckett, we discover, is a farmer on the Christmas tree farm that is owned by our main character in the first book. And for the life of me, that name has escaped me. I'm sure the main characters from the first book will be in this book and I will be able to let you know the character's name when I come back. I'm horrible with remembering characters' names. Like 10 minutes after I finish a book, I can't remember the characters' names. Beckett is a farmer on this Christmas tree farm. He's a pretty big side character in the first book and I really did like the Beckett character. So when I found out the second book follows Beckett, I was very excited. It also follows Evelyn, who is the second chance romance. Evelyn is the Instagrammer that comes to the Christmas tree farm in the first book as part of the competition. Evelyn, when she shows up in the first book, sees Beckett and it becomes very awkward because they had a previous hookup when Beckett went to New York for, I feel like some sort of farming convention. There was a lot of tension in the first book, some sexual tension around these two characters. And I'm so glad that the second book follows these two characters and what happens now that they've found each other again. Hi everyone. So last time I talked to you, it was Friday morning and I was going to read In the Weeds for my basically a Friday book for my seven and seven. I did not finish that on Friday. I meant to. Friday got very busy and just not a lot of reading happened. I probably got maybe 50% through on Friday and that's about it. It is now Saturday night at like 9 p.m. So it's been a minute since I've talked to you, but I have finished In the Weeds. This book, I'm gonna give it three stars. I did not like it as much as I liked Love Light Farms. I loved Love Light Farms, and one of the reasons I loved it so much was the small town feel and the kind of just this like quirky small town with these really interesting characters. And I feel like the vibes of that were not really in this book. It had moments of it, which I am giving it three stars. I didn't dislike it, but like I said, I just didn't love it as much as I loved Love Light Farms. It just, it had the vibes of that small town at moments, but overall through the book, I felt like it didn't have the same atmosphere as the first book, which is what I loved about Love Light Farms. There were moments like with the phone tree, if you've read the book, you'll know what I'm talking about, but it was just not as big a part of the book as it was in Love Light Farms, and again, that was one of the reasons I liked it. This follows Beckett and Evelyn. As I said last time I updated here, Beckett and Evelyn had a one night stand. We actually find out early on in this book that it was a two night stand. While they were both at various conferences, Evelyn was doing something for her Instagram influencer business and Beckett was at a farm conference. They have a two night stand and Evelyn leaves the morning after the second night without really speaking to Beckett. Like he wakes up and she's just gone. Like six months later, Evelyn shows up at the Christmas tree farm and everything from book one occurs. 
with the competition in Lovelight Farms. This takes place about another six months after the first book when Evelyn decides to come back to Lovelight Farms because she's just unhappy with her influencer life. She's bogged down, she's burnt out, and she needs a break, and she thinks Lovelight Farms in this small town is where she needs to return to. There is no room at the inn, and she has to stay with Beckett, which I really did like that concept. The only issue that I had with this relationship was it very much is based on a miscommunication. These two do not communicate well at all. And the whole book is just one miscommunication after another. So that was irritating to me, <laughs> just a tad, on how much it really focused on miscommunication. Other than that, like I said, there was a lot that I did like about this book. I loved seeing Beckett again with his animals. If, you see, if you've read the first book, Beckett is like this big, strong farmer man, but like inside he's kind of a big soft teddy bear adopting cats, adopting other animals. And I loved seeing that. I also just loved seeing Evie kind of figure out her new direction in life following burnout and kind of the talk of what happens when you hit burnout and what you need to do to kind of get your groove back and finding happiness when you realize what you've been working so hard for maybe isn't what you actually want. I did really enjoy those topics, but like I said, there was there was a lot of things I liked about the book. There was a few things that kind of bugged me, and then there was a big missing piece of the atmosphere that I love so much in Love Life Arms. Because of all that, I'm gonna give it three stars. I'm still definitely going to read the third book, which is Layla and Caleb's book, because I really do love the couples in here, and I'm hoping there's more of that atmosphere in the third book, fingers crossed. That being said, it is Saturday night and I should have already been finishing another book right now. I have started it. Earlier today at noon, I was on Margaret Sprints and I kind of needed a little break from In the Weeds. So I picked up my next book and kind of got a little head start in it. And that is The Proposal by Jasmine Guillory. I read The Wedding Date last year at the end of the year was going to do a binge -a series of this set of books. And for various reasons, things came up and I didn't continue the series at the time. I wanted to, but I just didn't have time to binge the whole series. So I stopped filming that video. But I really did want to continue this. And I now am for the prompt a POC, either author or character, either way it fits. This follows Carlos, who was Drew's best friend in the first book, The Wedding Date. I loved Carlos. He was one of my favorite characters of the first book. So I have very high hopes for this book. And I am already 120 pages and it's living up to what I wanted it to be so far, which is exciting. This also follows Nicole. Nicole is proposed to at a Dodgers game in front of the Jumbotron by her boyfriend of five months and turns him down because she does not love him and she suspects he doesn't really love her either. The fans turn on her and Carlos, who is sitting in the stands with his sister Angela, helps her escape Dodger Stadium. Obviously, this leads to a romance. This is a contemporary romance book. That is all that's in the synopsis though, so I'm not going to tell you anymore. I know a little bit more at this point because like I said, I am 120 pages through. Will I finish this tonight? Probably not, <laughs> probably not. I'm hoping to get maybe another 100 pages done tonight, which will leave me with 100 pages to do tomorrow and a whole other book to do tomorrow. But I think that's doable because it is Sunday and Sunday is a pretty low key day around here. Fingers crossed, but it should be okay. Hi everyone, it is actually Sunday, almost dinner time now, and I have finished two books since I last spoke to you, the last two books that I needed to read for rom com -a I was so focused on just getting these finished today that I forgot to update the vlog this morning because as of this morning, I had not finished the proposal. I had about 100 pages left on that, and then I had a whole other book to read. 
So it was a lot of reading today, but I'm done. I've got it done and I'm going to update you on the two books that I've read. So last time I spoke to you, I was going to start the proposal. I have read this entire book. It is going to be a four star book just. It almost was three stars, but I am going to give it four because I really do love the characters in this book and I did have a good time with it. This follows Nick and Carlos. They meet at this baseball game, which I told you about in the last clip. And fairly quickly, they start kind of like a friends with benefits relationship. There is almost no actual smut in this book. It's very close to closed door, if not closed door. So it's not super smutty, but it's a still a really cute romance. It's very much your, you know, your friends to benefits romance where they are going to keep it casual and then people start having feelings. They have to work through that. The part that I really enjoyed about this was seeing Carlos's family. His family is a big part of this book and I enjoyed seeing his relationships with his sister, his mother, his cousins, all, all of that I really enjoyed and that is the reason it's going to get four stars instead of three. I just really enjoyed that as part of the novel and I did like the relationship between Nicole and Carlos. I will say I did like the wedding date more though, but I did enjoy this and I will be continuing with the series. The last book I did for rom com was Part of Your World by Abby Jimenez. I love this book so very much. This is my favorite book that I've read this week. It is my only five star book that I've read this week. This comes out on top for rom com and we're ending on a super high note. This follows Alexis Grant. Alexis is an ER doctor who comes from a very well-known family of doctors. When we were talking about her family in the book, I kept thinking of Grey's Anatomy and like Meredith Grey and the Grey legacy. And that's kind of what the Montgomery legacy was like in this book. Her parents have huge expectations on her and her brother and they have to live up to these expectations. At the very beginning of the book, Alexis has kind of like a car mishap and goes off the road into a ditch. Everything is fine, but when she's waiting for a tow truck, a man comes by and basically gets her out of the ditch. She stops at the local bar to get some food and sees this man again and goes home with him, has a one night stand, and then sees that he is 28, which is 10 years younger than Alexis. She runs for the hills. She's like, I can't be doing this. This cannot be what's happening. But a relationship does start with Daniel and it covers, this book covers so many things. It covers parental expectations. It covers being very much from different, not just ages, but also from different societal places. Alexis has a lot of money and is very rich. And Daniel lives in a very small town with animals on a farm. And it's fantastic. I loved this small town that Daniel lived in. The town was so good. It covers physical abuse. It covers mental abuse. There is so much covered in this book. I absolutely loved Daniel and Alexis. They really did communicate really well. And I enjoyed seeing a book where miscommunication was not part of this. They really, really talked through everything. Even when the topics were hard and I thought, oh no, they're just going to run and not discuss it. They discussed it. And I appreciated that they discussed it. And like I said, this small town was everything to me. I love a book set in a quirky little small town. And this book had that in spades. And I just loved the setting of this novel. So again, this one got five stars and it is my last book of rom com -thon. So that's it. I have read seven books in seven days. It was touch and go there for a little while this morning when I was behind, but I have done it. And I hope you've enjoyed watching me read seven rom-coms in seven days. Talk to me down in the comments and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.